Good morning and welcome to Atheist Church. Sorry if I look a little haggard this morning. Uh, as usual, Sunday morning comes and I'm just exhausted. Why did I set myself up to do something on Sunday mornings when I almost always have shows on Saturday night? What was I thinking? I guess I could pre-tape this, but that just feels so unauthentic. So I had a great show with Coexist Comedy Tour last night. We'll get clips of that up within the next couple of days. Totally different comedians than uh, than the last clip I put up, so look forward to that. And uh, today I would like to say Happy Father's Day to all the uh, fathers out there. And, uh, and also a happy day to everyone out there who has successfully figured out how to use birth control. <laughs> it's a good little ribbing there since I'm going to be a father myself soon. Um, but to, really, I think people that aren't fathers, you know, with the uh, population approaching 7 billion, they should get a special day too. They should get a day when they can sleep in, a day when they can spend their money on whatever they want, a, a day when they can leave their pornography lying around the house and not worry about who's going to find it. In fact, they should get 365 days like that. Every year. I'll get back to uh, talking about the dads. Uh, it's an interesting subject to discuss on Atheist Church, because my dad is, uh, is an agnostic, who never really admitted he was an agnostic to me as a, as a kid. Um, religion wasn't... He didn't see it as a very important thing. I don't know that he saw it as a particularly destructive thing, either. Um, I feel like I got most of my... my morality from my mom. What I got from my father was this tempering pragmatism that actually serves me really well in life, and I really appreciate my dad for that. And I, here's one story that, that kind of gives an, an odd example of that pragmatism at work. Um, there was a, a crazy guy s standing outside of a restaurant having a big fight with his invisible friend because he said his invisible friend couldn't come in the restaurant. And apparently, we couldn't hear the other end of the conversation, but the invisible friend was, was fighting that he wanted to come in the restaurant. And people were getting uncomfortable. Management was deciding whether or not to call the police. Um, customers were afraid to leave. I mean, it was really like people were kind of over-responding to just some guy yelling at himself. Well, my dad's from New York, so this sort of thing didn't really phase him. And my dad just walks up to the crazy guy and says, Hey, listen why don't you let him come in the restaurant with you? And the guy looks at his invisible friend and goes, all right, come on. And that was the end of the problem. They had a lovely lunch together, the man and his invisible friend. Um, my dad didn't waste time arguing with the guy that, that someone wasn't really there, you know? And I love that. I love that sort of pragmatism. Uh, another time I, I got in an argument with my grandma, who at the dinner table, just out of the blue, says something racist to me. Like, I mean, we're sitting there eating peas, and she says, oh, well, if you think black people are so great... <laughs> It's like, really? That's an introduction to a conversation? And, uh, like, I was wearing a shirt that said, I love black people or something? And she says, you know, how come uh, the prisons are mostly black people? But um, I start arguing with my grandma, and my pragmatist father just interrupts it all and says, Mom, what came first, the chicken or the egg? To which my grandmother looks at him like he's an idiot and says, The chicken. And my dad just smiles and, you know, clears his plate and goes to do the dishes. And I got his point exactly. Like, why? Why are we having this argument? The woman knows what she knows, and there's... What's the point, you know? Um, yeah, she wasn't in a position of power. She wasn't doing anything that was going to hurt anyone. And more importantly, I wasn't going to change her mind. I was just going to ruin dessert. Which was apple pie with cinnamon. Oh, so good. And it is Father's Day, and I love bad stories. So I'll tell you one more. My uncle... I, and I'm not going to say his name, um, but, but an uncle of mine was, was having some mental problems, and, and we had to bring him from the East Coast to the West Coast and care for him. And uh, we set him up in an apartment here, and we got him established, and he was doing really well. And, uh, and it was nice. And, and I actually got to know this uncle at that point, who I hadn't before because he was so far away in, in New York. And then we go to visit him, and he's really distraught. And he goes to my dad, and he says... John, they found me. My dad says, oh yeah? And he says, the people that, that he, he was suffering from paranoia, and, and the people that, that apparently were watching him and, and ruining his life and, and after him, and they had found him. And so now this peaceful existence that we'd help him, helped him set up uh, had to be given up. He needed to move again. He needed to go back on the run because they found him. And everyone is telling him, no, they didn't find you. you. You need to accept that they're not real. There's no one trying to hurt you or anything else. And, and it wasn't working. He was getting more and more agitated at people not believing him. 
and then start, you know, right away pointing the finger at them, you're in with them, or you believe their lies, they got to you. My dad asks him if he could talk to him outside, and they step outside, and my dad says, listen, we brought you to the opposite side of the country, and they still found you. Where are we going to move you now? I think we're just going to have to deal with them. <laughs> and uh, my uncle said, yeah, you're right. And he, and he dealt with them. And uh, it was years later that I saw the, the movie A Beautiful Mind and thought of, of uh, actually analytically addressing your, uh, your hallucinations and, and uh, your, your paranoid delusions. And then mathematically uh, and logically figuring out if they're real or not. You know, let's see, you don't age. Everyone else does. Makes you one of the delusions. I can't stop seeing you, but I can accept what you are. And it reminded me of my father's approach. I wonder if he could have could have been a scholar in <laughs> dealing with mentally ill people for for these two very successful efforts. So anyway, that, I just thought I'd have some fun uh, dealing with my my dad, and and I think he really. It, it, bothers him that I'm so outspoken as an atheist and, and he sometimes sees me as a little bit of a crusader on something that I should just leave well enough alone but uh, whether he knows it or not he's really affected the way I go about it which is that I really like to interact with the friendly Christians out there and show that we can be friends as well as the friendly Muslims and the, the friendly Hindus and I mean you see the group of people I, I tour around do comedy with and, and we have a good time together and I think that that comes not only from my mom being a Christian and, and me loving her and never being able to, to try and dismiss them all as, as idiots or evil or whatever else um, some more extreme people try to do, uh, but also from my dad, who's like, you don't have to agree and, and you don't have to believe in the same things they believe. You, you can even think they're a little bit deluded. It doesn't make them bad people and it doesn't make you able to uh, unable to, to move on and just enjoy your time together. So, so thanks, Dad, for that, and I hope you're having a great Father's Day. And some people are calling this my first Father's Day. My, my lovely wife certainly did as she woke me up with breakfast in bed, which was great. Um, I would consider my next Father's Day when I actually have a baby outside of the womb to be my first. But, uh, because right now, this is my baby. <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, my wife's a little camera shy. She's not quite the, uh, the public person that I am. So that's much about <laughs> what you're going to get from her for now. But this is baby. And, uh, going on six months. Next week. Long, yeah. So we got about, uh, three and a half more and then uh we will have a little baby girl and i can't wait to meet her happy father's day dads bye bye it was really apple pie with cinnamon isn't it because you remember every meal that you ever had <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>